for many years, Frank raised quail for both of these reasons. I had a whole lot of quail, and they ate a whole lot of feed, and the feed went up a whole lot in price, and it didn't look like I could get my money out of the bird. Now, instead of thousands of quail, Frank has maybe 20. So if he wasn't making any money before, how, you might ask, can he make any money with only 20 quail? Well, being the resourceful fellow that he is, Frank has found a way to get a return on all that expensive bird feed. I just made 180 degrees and started working from the back end and thought maybe I could take the droppings and get something out of them, you know? <laughs> and get something out of them, he certainly did. It's probably safe to say that Frank O'Hill is the only person in the world to ever make jewelry out of quail manure. <laughs> That's right. Everything from bolo ties to lapel pins. How about tie tacks? Or even necklaces? And the selection wouldn't be complete without an engagement ring. As you probably guessed, Frank is a pretty down-to-earth type of guy. As a matter of fact, he's come to be known as the Manure Man of South Carolina. Not the most flattering title, but Frank is kind of proud of it. Now, that's not a very nice title, I admit, but the way I feel is, if you never had a title in your life before, then any title you got is better than no title at all. And it's kind of affectionate, I think. Maybe Frank has a point, but the whole idea of using quail droppings to make jewelry seems a little foul. But Frank started his business only as a joke. He made some and brought them to a meeting of the North American Game Breeders Association in California. You know, I gave one away and I sold 29, and I had $290 for $10 a piece that they'd buy them. I said, well, maybe, you know, my, I said, I just thought now, an old southern boy lay a little pile of no bigger than that, on a Yankee friend for $10, that that was really great. You know, I had a tingle in my fingertip, and I know Grandpa was really smiling. See, I, you know, it's just a joke, really, you know, but a lot of people like a good joke. And now it seems that everybody wants to be in on Frank's little joke. It's quite a big joke, actually, with the potential of becoming a multi-million dollar business. But Frank likes to keep things simple, as he puts it. He's the only worker, the president, the chairman of the board, and the secretary. Me and the birds do it all. I contract with the quail to get the dropping from them, and then the rest of it I do by myself. They enjoy it because we give them a lot of different kind of feed. We find that, you know, you change the feed, the color of them, you know, and you can get a different color dropping. And obviously, when one makes jewelry with bird droppings, one must start, well, under the bird and select only the finest materials. A good one is complete, you know. We do get a lot of seconds, and they'll be like a half dropping. So we have to eliminate and go through all the seconds and pick out the good droppings. Next, they're separated into different groups according to size and shape. Some people like big ones and some people like small ones, so we mix them all up. After Frank has the droppings placed in their mold, they're put in an oven to uh, firm them up a bit. He bought this oven after his wife, Hope, came home early one day and caught him using hers. I didn't realize that she would be so upset at me using the oven to dry the moisture out of my quail dog. So now, I either make sure I didn't got them out before she gets home or I do them outside. I thought I was going to buy a new stove. After pouring plastic around the droppings and cooking it a little bit longer, Frank then glues on the fittings that'll transform what was once a waste product into a fine piece of handmade jewelry that sells for $10 a piece. But who really cares? Who on earth would actually buy something like this? Well, how about a bank president? I think they're great conversation pieces, and I think that we need more laughter in the world today. And below the crust, uh, of sophistication, everybody has a little bit of humor. And I think these pieces, or the art, these artifacts, is, brings out this humor in people. George Bruce has been selling them for the past five years at the local Western Auto Store. We have a lot of traveling hunters that come through. We're, we're in a big hunting section, and they, they buy things as a novelty type thing to give their friends. It really amazes me that, uh, that so many people make such a to-do over such a little bit of doo-doo. With everybody making such a to-do at $10 a shot, you'd think Frank is getting wealthy. 
Yeah. No, not wealthy, really. I wouldn't want to get rich. I, I don't really care to sell too many. I think if you spend too much time in the manure factory, you'll get a bad odor to you. And I'd rather just fill a few orders and fish a while and come back and fill a few orders. But he is making enough money to enjoy a few of the finer things in life. Frank is pretty proud of his new fishing boat. And he doesn't mind showing off his airplane, either. But what Frank is really enjoying is his newfound notoriety that's come about from his little joke. Like a guest appearance with Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. I had a star that I made especially for him. It was a great big old drop, and I got up real early and went up there and collected the biggest one. You got to get up early in the morning to get the biggest one. That's the first one they drop in the morning. It's always going to be bigger than any of the rest of the overnight special. And, I embedded it in a star and gave it to him and told him it was a, you know, a big dropping for a big star. He said it, it, it was touching, but I didn't see no tears coming out of his eyes when he said it. <laughs> and while we were there, Frank even received a script for a movie that he'll be in with Burt Reynolds. Although he's enjoying all this sudden fame, none of this has gone to Frank's head. He's still the same good old boy he's always been. See, I'm like I am. I can't help it. I apologize a lot of people for being like I am, but I'm really not sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I like I am. I'm satisfied with myself, and I think everybody should be, because your genes fell out of way, and there's nothing you can do about it. 